In my letter, a great O is writing to a timber company to spread the word on the effects of human actions on the green population and how these actions come back to hurt mankind. To me, a great oak symbolizes wisdom because of its age and experience and strength because of its size. I thought these characteristics would make for a good representation of an authority figure because Woody is representing the entire green population. The timber company is just the icing on the cake because it's actually involved in what Woody is speaking out against. I see myself as an environmentally conscious person. It hurts me to see persons littering with abandon, their minds disconnected from the action. They don't see the future consequence, but I do. When my teacher told me I had won the National Legacy competition, I was in shock. And then she told me I had won the international component. Imagine how I felt. So <laughs> I wonder what made me stand out so much more than the other competitors. There, Mr. CEO, although this letter is addressed to Barakat Timbers, I am writing to anyone who is willing to listen. You humans constantly rave about your world wars and civil unrest, but what of ours? From the beginning, we have been murdered, but we were not greatly angered, for we understood your necessity. Now you don't just take what you need, but damage our habitats to such an extent that we shall never again thrive in the same location. You heartless beasts who claim superiority, yet cannot live in peace as we do? I am a great oak in the Windsor Forest of Guyana, and I say stop. Not even for my species' sake, but for yours. Do you not see how integral we are for the survival of your kind? Global warming is the ubiquitous crisis of this era, which stems from several causes. The burning of fossil fuels, which produce greenhouse gases, which are by definition gases that trap heat in the atmosphere, has been one of the greatest detrimental factors of global warming. The gases cause an increase in Earth's temperature, damaging the ozone, which is the most important layer of atmosphere involved in the protection of life on Earth. It shields you from the true burnt of the sun's rays, absorbing a colossal 97 to 99% of harmful ultraviolet rays. Greenhouse gases are emitted as a byproduct of burning fossil fuels, such as coal and crude oil. To ignore this situation is to leave you vulnerable. Other than with the few exceptions of phytoplankton and chemosynthetic organisms, plants are situated in the first trophic level of all food chains. All energy is obtained from the sun by humans indirectly, and the only way to gain some of that energy, other than from the minuscule part played by the other autotrophic organisms, is from plants. Why? Plants use sunlight energy, water, and carbon dioxide gas to create energy to sustain ourselves and to grow and develop. Humans cannot obtain energy in this way, and neither can any other mammals. Therefore, you gain this energy indirectly by eating plants, whether by eating the plant itself or an animal somewhere in the food chain through which the energy flows. To leave us vulnerable or to decimate us is suicidal. Erosion is becoming a major concern on Earth. Frequent mudslides and avalanches destroying towns, taking lives, and no one would believe if I told them the answer. Simply go au natural. When walking past a great oak such as I, you usually marvel at my height and circumference. Rarely does someone think of what is growing below my torso. I too have legs, though I prefer not to walk. Call it laziness. I see it as an investment in prime real estate. Working along with other materials, roots play a big part in keeping soil compact. When speaking of soil, humans are very ignorant of its layers. As topsoil is removed, subsoil is exposed and erosion occurs. Subsoil does not easily support agriculture, flooding occurs more readily, and in short, life on Earth increases in hardship. Once again, I offer you a simple solution. Let nature do her job. Many who read this will not take heed, but a word to the wise is enough. So for anyone who should be interested, I may offer some suggestions to aid in the continuation of your species. You may not see it now, a bit like getting taller. You don't realize it has happened unless you measure your height constantly or until there is such a difference that it is impossible not to have recognized it. Will you only stop when it is too late? Reduce the use of products made in factories that produce greenhouse gases. Don't drive a half mile to the supermarket for a box of milk. Take a nice walk through the refreshing air we recycle and provide for you. It's therapeutic and healthy. Use reusable plastics. Plant more trees around your homes. In this age of technology, use your electronics and less paper. But there will be those who will pay me no mind. 
And I say to you in the words of Jared Manley Hopkins, and for all this, nature is never spent. The sun will continue to rise in the east and set in the west. But should you continue on this hell-bent path, you will cease to be. As you say this suicidal wall, take note that I will never be conquered and shall rise as you fall. Yours sincerely, Woody Branch.